Unit two, lesson two. Okay, page 49 is our skills maintenance for today. So go ahead, pause the video, make sure to work through that page. All right, now that you've worked through that page, write the missing value above the variable, okay? Again, now, whenever we have an equation like this and we have a variable, our answers need to be written a certain way. M is our variable in this case. So M equals, this one P equals, T equals, N equals, R equals, okay? So in number one, we're looking at what minus nine equals seven, okay? So what minus nine equals seven? We're looking at 16 in this case. 16 minus nine is seven. P equals what? Eight times what is equal to 56? In this case, it is going to equal seven. Eight times seven is 56. Nine plus five is equal to T, so T is equal to 14. <clears throat> 16 divided by four is equal to N, so 16 divided by four is four. Okay, and then what plus seven is 12? In this case, R is equal to five. Okay, when we're looking at a number pattern, circle the general statement, general pattern that matches. Again, I see plus zero, plus zero, plus zero. Okay, so the only one that says plus zero is C. Okay, and then those values, those first ones, those are variants, so we're gonna represent with the variable, which is X in this case, equals that same number. Okay, so X plus zero is equal to X. In this case, I see minus equals zero, minus equals zero, minus equals zero. Okay, so then what I see there is B. Okay, and then that first value for the 175, that's the number that's varying. So X minus X equals zero. For number three, I see one times in all of them. One times, one times, one times. Okay, equals times that number equals that same number. Okay, so in this case, one times that number that's varying equals that number that's varying, which we represent with x. So one times x equals x. Okay, so today, identify patterns involving more than one variable, and then we will write those general statements that reflect the pattern. So, properties of numbers. A plus zero equals A. Anytime we add a num no, the number zero to any number, it is equal to that number. Okay, B times one equals B. Any number times one is always going to equal that number itself again. So B times one equals B. Okay, so writing those statements with multiple variables, okay? In this case, we're gonna have two variables. We got five plus six equals six plus five. We're gonna know it's five, five. We're gonna use a letter or a variable to represent that. And the six and six, we're gonna use another variable to represent those. Okay, so you'll see that in a second here. Okay, here's some more examples. One half plus one third equals one third plus one half. 2.2 .2 plus 3.3 .3 equals 3.3 .3 plus 2.2. .2. Okay, so what you're gonna notice every single time, five and five, one half, one half, 2.2, 2.2, .2, we are representing those numbers with A. Okay, then the inside numbers, Okay, those are all the same. We're representing that with B. So A plus B equals B plus A. Now again, you don't have to use A and B. You could use X and Y. X plus Y equals Y plus X. Either way works. So they're just going to do exactly what I did, just highlighting those values. Okay. So A plus B equals B plus A. So let's check. Let's pick some numbers. Just some random ones. Let's say A is one, B is two. Okay, so simplifying that left side, we get three. Simplifying that right side, we also get three. Since both sides equal three, this is a true statement, meaning it does work. Okay, so whenever you're writing these general statements like this, you plug in some random values in for A and B, okay, they better equal the same on both sides. Okay, so we got four plus two plus one, equals two plus four plus one. Okay, three plus seven plus eight, equals seven plus three plus eight, five plus six plus nine, equals six plus five plus nine. So before we get to that, let's go ahead and let's do this one on our own. Okay, I'm gonna see four and four, three and three, five and five. 
Okay, if I go to the two, that comes first on the right side. Seven, six. Okay, so for our green, let's say, let's use X. Okay, so X, we're gonna say equals, and we're gonna have that space plus that X. Okay, so we're gonna have vari three variables on both sides here. Okay, X is in the first and the left side, in the middle on the second side. So for two, seven and six there, let's say we'll use Y. Okay, and one thing, these are all adding these in between. Okay, so then when I look for the red, the red showed up first this time, and we represented the red with Y. And then finally for purple, let's go ahead and use Z. Okay, so if you notice, X plus Y plus Z is equal to Y plus X plus Z. Finding those corresponding spots, just like we got X plus Y equals, plus Z equals Y plus X plus Z. Okay, so notice that the first and middle variables on the left side of the equal sign have been moved or commuted on the right side, right hand side, so that the middle variables are the new order, middle plus the first plus the last. Okay, again, I haven't mentioned this, but addition is commutative. Okay, so we can manipulate all those, those three variables in any order and it's still going to work. Okay. Just like x plus y plus z. So checking y plus x plus z. So 30 is x. 50 is y. And then finally 20 is z. Okay, so you'll see them put that in that order. So 30 plus 50 plus 20 is equal to 50 plus 30 plus 20. Simplifying both sides. 100 equals 100. Again, you should get that true statement at the end. Always. Okay. So x plus y plus z equals z plus y plus x. x plus y plus z equals x plus z plus y. And again, like I had mentioned earlier, the commutative property of addition tells us that we can change the order of the add-ins in any addition problem. Okay, so again, you can, the x, y, and the z, you can put them in any order. And since it's addition, they will work every time. Now, that's important that it's addition, because if we look here, 3 minus 2 equals 2 minus 3. Using that same idea, we can say x minus y. Here, they'll do it here in a second. <clears throat> well, no, they don't. But, okay, so 3 minus 2 equals 2 minus 3. Using that idea that we had with addition. So if you simplify, 3 minus 2, that's 1. Then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1 does not equal negative 1, okay? So there is an error in this problem. The only way this is going to work is that it's addition, okay? Because addition is commutative. Subtraction is not, okay? So make sure that it is addition when you do those types of general statements. Okay, go ahead, pause your video. Apply skills, page 50. Okay, so looking back here, write the general statement using variables. Check your work by substituting values of your choice for the variable. Okay, so let's go ahead. We got three numbers. Okay, we're using the variables A, B, and C. A, B, C equals something, something, something. We got to get that correct order. In these cases, they are all addition. Okay, so I'm going to see four and four is last. Okay, so let's go ahead and use A for four. A, and A was last on the right side. So if we go to 7, that was the middle number again. Let's go ahead and use B and B. And then finally 5 and 5. So we got C and C. Again, it's asking to use the variables A, B, and C. So make sure to use those. Now, let's go ahead and check. Let's say A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. So we're saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals... 3 plus 2 plus 1. Here, I'll put those in the right color here. So, we said A plus B plus C, so 1. And then 1 would be last. B is 2, so plus 2. Plus 2. And C, plus 2. 
plus 3, 3 plus. Okay, and if we look at that, this is 6 is equal to 6, so therefore we have the correct answer. <coughs> okay, and the correct pattern. Now for the next ones, I will go ahead and I'm just going to write the pattern. We won't exactly check. And again, that we had 1, 2, and 3, you can use any values there. Okay, so for the next ones now, for this one, we would have M, N, and P as our variables. So we're going to say M times N times P is equal to P times N times M. Okay, so just highlighting, there's our M, there's our N, there's our P. Okay. Finally, for number three, we're going to use X, Y, and Z. So X plus Y plus Z equals X plus Z plus Y would be the general pattern. And again, when you're doing this, you should have picked some numbers for those variables, plugged them in, and make sure you get that true statement, just like we did on number one. Okay, so our problem solving activity. Activity, I will cre ta create tables to solve all types of problems involving multiplicative relationships. Okay, so just like the last time we had those cards, okay, and we were looking for a pattern, the vertical pattern. Okay, those cards three, seven, and nine were the same because, or had the similar pattern because you took the number of X's times three, that gave you the number of O's. Or if you went the opposite way, the number of O's divided by three equaled the X's. Okay, so now we can create a table to help us figure out, if you notice, all these are times three. Okay, so that would be the cards that had that same pattern because they were all multiplied by three in this case. Okay, so an example here, use a table and a vertical strategy to solve the word problem. Okay, in the video game test, test track. Opponents race each other over different courses. The courses can be challenging for new players. <clears throat> Troy and Carmen are playing one of the games. Carmen has played the game a lot, but Troy is just learning. Carmen completes four laps around the track for every two laps that Troy completes. When Troy is on lap 10, what lap is Carmen on? If the entire race is won, when a racer finishes 32 laps, what lap is Troy on? What lap is Carmen on? Okay. Um, so we said that Carmen completes four laps for every two laps. Okay. So that gives us the first one. Now, if you just keep going with that, so every four laps, Carmen, we're just going to use our multiples of four. Count by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, so on and so forth. Okay. So then Troy's laps, he finishes two laps for every four of Carmen's. So then we just use our multiples of two there. Now, the question was, when Troy is on lap 10, what lap is Carmen on? Okay, so in this case, I am looking at for when Troy is on lap 10. So when I look, I see this case right here. Okay, this is telling me that Troy is on lap 10, meaning Carmen is on lap 20. Okay, so there's our answer for that one. Carmen is on lap 20. Now, if the entire race is won when the racer finishes 32 laps, what lap is Troy on when Carmen finishes the race? Carmen's, get a, Carmen's going faster, so Carmen will finish the race. And since it's done at 32, so I'm looking here. Okay, then I just go vertically. That tells us what lap Troy is on. So when Carmen finishes the race, Troy will be on lap 16. Okay, so our problem solving activity, using that same scenario, okay, on page 51, go ahead, pause the video, and work on that. Okay, so I've gone and filled in a few of the tables already, but... Now, now it is time to see who else can win at the video game. Test track. Lower a series of races. One player is better than the other. Make tables to answer the question for each race. Check the answer using the vertical strategy. Write the multiplication or division equation. Okay. Maria and Tony are racing. Tony has played more than Maria. Tony, Tony's car completes two laps for every one lap of Maria's car completes. Okay. So when we look at this, Tony completes two laps for every one lap of Maria. Okay, so then once we get to this point, it's just a matter of doing the, mul the multiples of two for Tony, okay? Because when Tony finishes four laps, Maria will finish another lap. Okay, so counting, do doing our multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 
18 and then our multiples of 1. And then using that table to answer the questions below. Okay, how many laps will Tony have completed when Maria completes four laps? So when Maria completes four laps, which is right here, Tony completes eight. Okay. So check the answer with the vertical strategy. Okay, so we know that if we take Maria's laps times two, that gives us Tony's laps. Or we can go vice versa. If we take Tony's laps divided by two, we can get Maria's lap. So in this case, check the answer vertical strategy. We're going to say 4 times 2 is equal to 8, which is good there. Okay. Now, if the race is 12 laps, what lap will Maria be on when Tony finishes? Tony finishes here, so Maria will be at lap 6. Okay. In this case, we're going to do 12 divided by 2 to give us that 6. Okay. So then I'm just going to fill out these ones. Um... <clears throat> So 20 laps for this, and then the check would be 4 times 5, 20, and then we get lap 8, and LaShawn is on lap 40, and then 40 divided by 5, equal to that 8, and then finally for the last problem, the answers will be 18 laps, 9 times 2 is 18, lap 21, and then finally, 42 divided by 2 is equal to that 21. Okay, so I filled in those answers for those last two. Make sure that you get the correct answers on there. And if you have any questions, make sure to bring those up in class. All right, your homework is Unit 2, Lesson 2 homework. Make sure to get that completed. And have a good day.